Hi there! In this video we're going to learn about different ways to represent inputs and outputs. Input and output are going to help us in other sections of graphs. We're going to learn about flow diagrams, tables, equations, coordinates and graphs and terminology that relates to input and output. So let's get started. Let's learn about flow diagrams. You've seen flow diagrams before that represent input and output. Input on the left certain operations are performed to get to the output. So let's look at an example. Suppose one of the operators is to multiply by 2 and the next operator is to add 3. When we input the number 1 and we first multiply by 2 and then we add 3, we get 1 times 2 is 2 plus 3 is 5. Can you input another number for me? 2 times 2 plus 3 and you get the output of 7. When you input the number 3 and you times that by 2, and then you add 3, you get an output of 9. We're going to use this flow diagram to help us with our other methods of representing. So when we have a look at a table, a table shows input and output. And it shows the input and its corresponding output. So when we put 1 into the flow diagram, the output was 5. When we input 2, the output was 7. And when we input 3, the output was 9. So a table does not show the operators. It only shows input and output. Let's have a look at descriptions in words. The words show what has happened to the inputs. So we took a number, we multiplied it by 2, and then we added 3. The numbers 1, 2, and 3 are multiplied by 2, and 3 is added to that product. Or we could say 3 is added to the products of a number and 2, where the numbers that are used are 1, 2, and 3. Some form of description like that. If we look at equations, we now want to take this into a general form instead of just these three particular points. We want to input x as a variable to stand for all numbers, and we want to output something which we will call y. So x is our input, y is our output, and we now describe what has happened to the x to get to the y. We took the x, we multiplied it by 2, we added 3, and we got y. We took the x, we multiplied it by 2, and we added 3 to get the y. Let's write this in better algebraic convention form, where we talk about how the output was achieved. So y occurred because we times x by 2 and added 3. But we don't like that time sign, so we're going to write it as y equals 2x plus 3. We could also use coordinates to write what we've got here. Coordinates show the input first and the output second, and they show corresponding points of input and output, just much like a table did, I guess. So if we input 1, we get 5 as the output. Coordinates have a semicolon between them and are written in brackets. Input, output. Last one, can you make the coordinates? 3, 9. We're going to use these coordinates now to represent it graphically. Representing something on a graph, we have a horizontal x-axis and a vertical y-axis. As I said, the horizontal is the x and that represents the input, if you remember. The y-axis or vertical axis represents the output. Right, let's remove those words so that we can focus on coordinates. The coordinate 1, 5 is found by placing 1 on the x-axis because it is the input number and 5 on the y-axis because it is the output number and then finding where those two numbers meet. Can you plot the point 2, 7? 2 on x, 7 on y, where do they meet? Finally the point 3, 9. 3 on x, 9 on y, where do they meet? If we had plotted the equation y equals 2x plus 3 as we formed earlier, it would not just be these three discrete values, this is called a discrete graph by the way, it would be the line going through them all. So let's summarize what we've learned. Five ways, a flow diagram, a table, words, an equation, coordinates, and last but not least, a graph. I hope you've learned something interesting here and enjoyed it.